Reverend Lorm is telling me it's time to stand up. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. good morning. And welcome to United Presbyterian Church on this, uh, I don't want to say gloomy, but misty Sunday morning. All right, that's it. Sounds a lot yeah. nicer, right? Ministers need spin doctors too, right? <laughs> um, so we do have a few announcements uh, this morning. Uh, one session will be meeting Monday evening at 7 p.m., of course, the change is due to our Advent schedule um, because our Advent meditation service is Tuesday evening. It will be our final one. Uh, I will be uh, giving the meditation uh, this Tuesday, and we've had fantastic um, meditations this year. Alejandro did a wonderful one, and, and um, the Reverend Rosen was here last week, and he did a, a, a great one as well. So uh, we thank our our speakers, they, did a, they have done a great job this year. Uh, also, after service, we do have a congregational meeting for the purpose of electing our new slate of elders and deacons. Uh, please plan uh, to be here. Um, it will take five minutes tops, I promise. And then we can all go downstairs. And for my confirmands, for those who are in my confirmation class, I would like you to stay and watch because you too will be voting very soon. So I want you to see how congregational meetings take place. Um, Study-wise, our um, afternoon study is still on hiatus, on vacation. Uh, we will not be meeting until sometime in the new year. Our uh, 6 p.m. study will be meeting this Tuesday. Um, and then, of course, the Advent will be directly afterwards. Um, and I think that's all the announcements I have. Uh, Alan? During the cookie exchange in the fellowship hour today, um, those who would like to uh, pay for the poinsettias they sponsored or sanctuary flowers you may have sponsored throughout the year, um, I will be receiving payment for those. We, uh, the worship team will also have the uh, souvenir Advent cookie cutters uh, down there, they're $3 each. And if you all remember, for years, Alan Foster always took care of uh, the buy one, get one free coupon books from the Exchange Club, and they dropped some off here on Thursday. So I'll have those uh, downstairs at the uh, table also. Thank you, Alan. Linda. I have a message for the minister here. I brought the paperwork we talked about in case you need it today. Yes, I do. Yes, do you have it? Okay. <laughs> You'll find out soon enough what the message is about. <laughs> announcements this morning? Yes, Lou. Many of you know I made a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle of the church building, and Marion had put it together one Sunday. Well, I have it downstairs, so if during the holiday you're bored and you want something to put together, let me know and I'll loan it to you. Thank you. Any others? Hearing none, let us worship God.
On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angel said that his coming was good news of great joy for all the people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Praise his name. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We don't get to do these things quite often. I'm not talking about the Advent read, we're moving on. But we don't get to do dedications that often. And um, but today is a special day. Um, because we are dedicating hard work, dedication, um, and a vision of one of our own. And that person is Thomas Light. And I would like to personally thank Thomas from the church for all of his hard work that he's done for us. Um, this is for, for his Eagle project. Uh, Thomas has uh, pretty much tore out <coughs> some of the older plants and put in newer plants. But not just that. I mean, they did serious reno. I think there was a bobcat here one day and everything. You know, not the kind that does this, but the kind <laughs> that actually pushes dirt out of the way, yeah? And um, we have new plants, but also, as the work was going on, there was a piece of it that I had totally forgotten about that he was going to be doing. And that was, he had put together the vision of another individual within the church. Um, he was inspired to create a variation of Todd Bowles' Little Free Library by creating and taking and putting food, which is shared, in a box. And that box is part of the new landscape that Thomas had put together for his congregation. And if you look outside, it's right there. Um, so a little history behind this box. Because you'll see them all over Bloomington, and they're, they've kind of popped up all over the American landscape. Todd Bowl called his brainchild the Little Free Library, a spiritual gesture. In 2009, he built a small monument to his mother, who had been a school teacher. The wooden replica of a schoolhouse, two feet high and two feet wide, held his mother's books. And he put it in his front yard, hoping to start a little book exchange for his neighbors. That was the beginning of the founding of a nonprofit organization called Little Free Library a year later. They operate under the honor system. You take a book and sometimes you leave a book. So the content of the boxes are constantly changing. And as I said, Bloomington has a number of these around within people's front yards. Bowl died on Thursday, October 18th of 2018 in hospice care in Oakdale, Minnesota. He was 62. Now, moving on to our vision and our interpretation of the bowl's box. I was hungry and you fed me. Gospel of Matthew 25, 35. The Boy Scout oath has traditionally been considered to have three promises, two of which are duty to God and duty to other people. Many people need help. A cheery smile and a helping hand make life easier for others by doing a good turn daily and helping when you are needed. You prove yourself a scout and do your part to make this 
a better world. According to NPR article in April 3rd of 2018 entitled A National Survey Shows High Rate of Hunger and Homeless Community Amongst College Students. 29% of four-year college students are at high risk of hunger. Uh, I remember when I was in my undergraduate, I, I think I survived probably a whole year on ramen noodles. <laughs> and you can see its effect. So <laughs> keep that in mind, right? Good nutrition for university students. I mean, what do you get for 12 for a dollar, you know? So. Now, our church is in walking distance from many IU dorms and can help address that hunger issue. We have been collecting food that we provide to the United Ministries Food Pantry for a number of years. Um, and we do this. And this put, and this concept, in addition, we can now take food and put it into the hands directly of the hungry. It is another way to find and feed the hungry within our community. And all they need to do is find Thomas's box. He placed here on the east side to find the food that many people so need. Now all these perspectives on connecting and helping those in need come together. And they come together on our lawn of the United Presbyterian Church, second and east side in Bloomington, Indiana. So I would like to take this moment to thank Thomas Light for all of his work. And that's not all. I mean, Thomas is continually doing yard work. His dad has him up on the roof, gutters. <laughs> I mean, there is so much of what Thomas does that many of us don't even see. And so, Thomas, thank you for all your work and dedication to this congregation. And uh, we wish you all the best in your uh, journey to Eagle Scout. And um, we thank you uh, very much. So this morning, we dedicate all of Thomas's work around our church, the landscaping, and we dedicate our food box, which it's an interesting point. There's already books in there. <laughs> so, I guess someone had driven by and said, oh, look, a book box. We'll, put some, we'll, you know, we'll give them a, what do we say, we'll feed the pot. <laughs> you know? So they, they kind of put books in there already, so we're going to have to, you know, uh, Linda and I have already talked about you know, making a sign or having a sign painted on the side so people know that this is for food and not books. Well, the books are not bad. They're <coughs> wonderful. Just, um, it just it was so interesting. One day I drove, I was coming to church, and there were books in that box. So, anyway. Half books, half food. What? Half books, half food? Yeah. Uh, food for the soul, food for the So they, they can read, you know, uh, Da Vinci Code and, yeah. and have some pie, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thomas, thank you again for all of your hard work. Please join me in reading your call to worship, located in your bulletin. Happy are those whose hope is in God, who made the earth and the sea and all the creatures in them. We seek we see God, God who keeps faith forever. forever. We seek that God who gives justice to the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. We, we see God, God who sets, sets those in prison free, free, who opens the eyes of those who fail to see clearly. Praise God who brings hope to all generations. Please rise if you are able to sing our opening hymn, O Come All Emmanuel, number nine.
Yeah, I'm going to to let to Colombia. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. such a pivotal figure of Advent. But today, we're going to talk about an aspect of John. If you had to describe John the Baptist, how would you describe him? And don't say he was a snazzy dresser. <laughs> how would you describe John? Was he quiet? You know much about I'll give you a clue. 
Wherever John went, he ruffled feathers, whether for the good of the kingdom or for the bad of his adversaries. John didn't seem to have people in the middle. People either liked John or they didn't. Yeah. We would say that John was a very bold individual. What do you think bold means? If I would say that woman is bold, or that man is bold, what do you think that means to be bold? To be strong sure of themselves, to speak what's on their mind, to defend people that need to be defended, okay. and to call out what people see that might be not right. And that was John. And boldness John had overflowed. He was so bold that it cost him his life. I mean, that's an overload of bold when you think about it. So as Christians today, we look back at the individual of John the Baptist, who had come to prepare the way for Jesus, who had come to say, repent because someone greater is coming behind me. We celebrate him and we celebrate his boldness today. And as the church, we look back, because last week we talked about it is our job to herald in the coming of the Christ as the church. Well, now it is our job to be bold like John the Baptist. So as John's voice no longer cries out from the wilderness, it must be our voice that cries out to say, Things aren't the way they should be. We should be caring for people. We should be making sure people are fed. We should be making sure that people have places where they're comfortable, that people are not abused. We should make sure people know about God and how much God loves them. As John spoke boldly, we must speak boldly. It is our job to take up the mantle of that wily Baptist out in the wilderness. So throughout your lives, be bold, be strong, find your inner John the Baptist, and make sure you care for people and show it through strength and boldness. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we thank you your servant John. And we ask that we have just a fraction of his boldness to empower us within our own lives. Encourage us to be brave, to speak out to injustice, to speak out to your coming, to speak out for your salvation, to speak out for all the wonderful things you offer humanity. Let us be bold like your servant John throughout this season. All right, our song this morning is number eight in our white song books, C.E. First.
God of strength and gentleness, remind us again this Advent season of the holy way for God's people to travel. Forgive us for failing to see your joy and majesty. Forgive us for being weak and serving you. Forgive us for failing to see the glory of your creation, where the waters can break forth in the wilderness, and the desert shall bring forth beauty. Open our eyes to see your promises. Open our ears to hear the good news of your love for all your children. Grant our thirst with showers of your love for us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He bore on himself our sins and his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Today's first scripture reading is Luke chapter 3, verse 7 through 14. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit, good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What shall we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, The man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, And what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. This is the word of God for the people of God. The second gospel lesson picks up in Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 18, continue to listen for the word of the Lord. The people were waiting expectantly and were, and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in hand to clear the, his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I've ever thanked Miriam for my water, but thank you. You're welcome. For my always ice cold water. <laughs> I appreciate it. I really, really do. Boldness. How important is boldness? It was the 
Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. that said, a man who won't die for something is not fit to live. That to me is a bold statement. Now boldness is a trait that is important to any cause and to any leader. And this includes the mission of the early church. Within the Bible, we witness many individuals who are willing to lay it on the line, waging their lives for their cause. From St. Stephen to the apostles and the army of women who helped spread the gospel throughout the Mediterranean world, many were willing to give it their all for the service of Christ's gospel. But when it comes to the term bold or boldness, in the dictionary you might find a picture of John the Baptist. You know, the one whose voice cried out in the wilderness. John is probably one of the boldest figures in the New Testament. I mean, just think about it. John's first recorded words in Luke's gospel, you brood of vipers. <laughs> How's that for an intro? <laughs> right? I don't know if I told you this last week, but there's this meme. It's, this, it's an Advent greeting card. And it has this picture of this big burly guy with a big burly beard. It says, Happy Advent from John. And it says, you brood of vipers. <laughs> <laughs> I should send those out one year. <laughs> Only my seminary friends would probably get a kick out of it. The rest would probably call someone on me. You know, but this is not the end. Because this is just the beginning for John. That's his intro, you brood of vipers. Because he continues his tongue lashing, asking the religious leaders, who has warned you about the wrath to come? I know about it, but how do you guys hear about it? Now, this is a rhetorical question. John is not wanting an answer from them, right? He questions their motives. Why do you want to be baptized? Because John says, you know what? You can no longer get away with just saying, Abraham is our ancestor. John says, that no longer cuts it. Or John would say, Actually, that never cut it. As Luke's gospel addresses John's statement with a warning that God is able to raise up new children to Abraham, an allusion to the soon inclusion of the Gentiles. Saying, don't rest too hard on them loyals. Don't, don't get too comfortable, right? For at the center of John's message points to a true repentance of one's heart. John understands that God demands true followers. Now these are tough words from a bold prophet. Think about it. This is John. And he is speaking directly to the religious leaders of his day. Right? That's bold. Now the crowd responds to John. Well then what then should we do, O wily prophet? Right? So John replies to the group with some foreshadowing. Whoever has two coats must share one who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. And then to the tax collectors he says, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. And to the soldiers, he says, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. Now the ring of these words should sound familiar to all of us. They might not be word by word copied, but the theme the heart of this message should sound familiar as the passion for social justice runs thick within Jesus' family lineage. 
Because the crowd then questions if John is the Messiah. Are you the one? Are you the one we've been waiting for? I mean, hundreds and perhaps thousands of people have come into the wilderness to have John baptize them there in the Jordan. And imagine as these people are being baptized, imagine these people wondering, is John the one? Is this the one that we've been waiting for? For hundreds upon hundreds of years. Think about the emotions that must have been flowing that day there in the wilderness. As John is addressing each of these different groups. I mean, let's face it, John was popular. Whether you loved him or you hated him, there's no such thing as bad publicity, <laughs> right? People came out there to see John, right? But he understood his purpose. John was not sidetracked just because of his fame or popularity. Because he knew that he was there specifically to prepare and straighten the way for Jesus for his cousin. No, John is not the Messiah. And John understood that. John understood his role in the grand scheme of things. John states that his baptism is one of water and one of repentance. It's a preparation. But he also understood that there is one who is coming who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And that is not him. That is not his baptism. His is one of preparation. He is getting them ready for the one that he is unworthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Now John's bold message of repentance has spread wide throughout Judea. I would imagine you probably could not go on any street and find anyone that did not know who John was. Right? Because John challenged those around him. He challenged his followers and he challenged his adversaries. Both Jew and Gentile. And John was bold enough even to challenge the Herods. We know how that worked out for John. Yeah, not too well. For his boldness, John gave his very life. He had many chances to back down. And if you think back to those conversations, especially in Mark's gospel, you could hear Herod pleading with him, why can't you just shut up for five seconds? He didn't say five seconds. But he's asking him, why can't you just be quiet? Why? Because he couldn't. He couldn't. That was not in John's DNA. He was bold. Nothing could quiet him. Except death. Our faith comes to us because of those who came before us, right? Faith is not in our, you know, our personal faith is not somewhere within our code that we're born and we just automatically become, right? Our faith comes to us because individuals were willing to take great risks to make sure we would have the opportunities that they did. Stephen, Peter, Paul, John, and like I said earlier, armies of women who worked with Paul and the apostles to work as early, as early missionaries to spread the gospel throughout the Mediterranean world. We are all products of people passing on the word to us. To us. And they 
were bold. The Roman Empire looked at Christianity like they did so many things and said, oh, passing fad. Don't worry about it. These followers of this guy that was crucified somewhere in the, the wilderness, they'll be gone soon. Don't worry about it. Good thing they were wrong. But that's how they thought about it. They thought that Christianity was a passing fad like so many others that they had seen before. But we are here only because of people's boldness, that they had passed the gospel down, and then the gospel was passed down again, and again, and again. We are all here because of word of mouth. And that is an amazing thing. So what can we learn from this, we can learn a great deal. We can learn a great deal from people like John. We as Christians must be bold in our beliefs and our convictions. We must be bold. We must spread the gospel through our words and through our actions. Because that's the only reason why we are here. If we no longer talk, it will no longer be a church. We must do that. We must also do as John said. If you have two coats and someone has none, give that individual a coat. If you are with someone who is hungry, pat him on the back and say, hope you find a meal soon, Jim. Give them some food. Give them some food. Defend those who need to be defended. Give a voice to the voiceless. Love someone who is unloved. Be that champion to those who are marginalized. Be bold. As John was bold, we should be bold. Because there should be a piece of John in all of us. That boldness that could not be silenced. That was John. That only an axe was able to silence. It was only when they took his life that he was silent. Be bold. Be bold in all you do. Be bold in spreading the gospel. Be bold in loving your neighbor. Be bold in feeding the hungry. Be bold in championing, being the champion of the least of these. Live the life we were called to live. We are called Christians for a reason. It's a word that means little Christ. People. Because like John, we should all be able to identify a brood of vipers. <laughs> Happy Advent. Thanks. I have another sip of Miriam's water. <laughs> and now, like earlier, we are able to celebrate something that we don't celebrate every Sunday. It is a wonderful experience for the church. We are able to welcome, officially, someone to this community of faith. I would like to invite Jim down. I think he'll stand here. session, I present Jim McDonald, who has been received into membership of this congregation by reaffirmation of faith. Thank you. Jim, you come to us as a member of the one holy Catholic Church, into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring us. 
There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called, into the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. As Jim spoke to us this morning, uh, to the elders there in the uh, parlor, you know, I, I told Jim, I said, you know, this is almost, you know, it's, it's a ceremony, but you've been a member of this <coughs> congregation for a while now. You've been coming and supporting and serving and fellowshipping, and we have all had the opportunity to get to know you. And, um, and so I said, you know, it's almost a formality, but we are so thankful that you are here and that you have decided to be, become a member of this community of faith. So, sisters and brothers in Christ, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and that of our being grafted into Christ through birth, life, and death and resurrection of Christ and the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed us from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal and promises made at our baptisms. I therefore, I ask you therefore once again to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church into which we were baptized. So Jim, I have uh, three questions for you that are asked of every member of a PCUSA community. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? Jim, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you? And to you, the congregation of United Presbyterian Church, will you welcome Jim into this community of faith? Will you share your gifts with him? Will you support him? Will you be there for him when he needs help? Will you? We will. Yeah. Okay. Let us pray. Faithful God, you work in us and for us, even when we don't know it. When our path has led us away from you, you guide us back to yourself. We thank you for calling your servant Jim to the fellowship of your people. Renew in him the covenant you made within his baptism. By the power of your spirit, strengthen him in faith and love, that he may serve you with joy. And to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this point, let us welcome Jim, as he will join us in the worship and mission of this congregation. Jim says it's Garrett and Vera that are responsible. So thank you, Garrett and Vera. This has been a very uplifting service. Even talking about John and his boldness. It's just uplifting between Thomas and, and Jim. I, I'm loving this. Bring friends. Let's do this every Sunday. I love this idea. As we do every week, we come to the portion of this service where we are able to bring our concerns directly to God. What lies heavy upon your hearts this morning? What joys do you have that you would like to share with each other and with our Lord? Yes, Peter. Uh, the, fa the Haddad family is leaving next week, so I would like to have 
graders. Now, there's a lot of the dods. Which of dods are we talking about? <coughs> All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> so we're just going to do a blanket. <laughs> prayers for the healing of Benjamin's shoulder and thanks that everything went well. You know, you're going to have to go a little bit slower if you want me to get all these names down. <laughs> I don't know shorthand. <laughs> I it's just thank God for everything. It's, it's just been a wonderful experience. If you can call having your spine split open a wonderful experience. <laughs> It is if you feel that afterwards. Yeah. That's right. Yes, Linda. Yeah. This is sort of a story of a miracle, I guess. Bill Crates has been on our list for prayers. The gentleman from Columbus, we know his son. His heart was out of rhythm. I don't know what it's clinically called. But in effect, they had to stop his heart and start it again. So he's been on the prayer list here. I told his son that last week, and the son just smiled. And I thought, I don't understand. I thought Dad was really in bad shape. He said, what you just told me explains it. One shot, Dad's fine. Fantastic. And it's crazy. Again, thank God for uh, welcoming uh, Jim to our congregation. <coughs> Prayers for Aline's mom and Mary Lou Rhodes, please. Let's go to God through the gift of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Lord, we thank you so much for all of the wonderful things that we see within our world because there is great beauty within your creation. And this morning we thank you because we were able to celebrate some wonderful things. We are able to celebrate one of our own. We celebrate Thomas. We we're able to recognize all of his hard work in helping to beautify our grounds and to create the box that will help feed, help supplement food for our community. We thank you for his labors and we thank you that he chose his church to help with his Eagle Project. And Lord, we are also so thankful that you are alive and well and still calling people to your church. We are so thankful for Jim McDonald and we are thankful that he is officially 
a member of this congregation. Although we feel that he has been a member here for so long now, we can now say it is official. And we can confirm that we are a better congregation with him. Allow us to welcome his gifts and his talents and allow him to welcome our, our kindness and our gifts to help edify him as we are all part of this church. Lord, we thank you for so many things. We pray for those nations who live under the dark cloud of war and civil unrest. We pray for those who have no homes or whose homes have been destroyed. We pray for those refugees who look for safety. We ask that safe borders open and that homes can be found where roots can be planted. And like so many on this earth, just want to live in peace, to raise a family, and to live in comfort. Lord, we lift up those who are under oppression. We ask for the end of apartheid. We ask that people who are marginalized, we ask that they be liberated. And they too can live in peace. Sometimes we take for granted the ability that we're able to do that within our nation. Allow that freedom to be passed throughout our world. Lord, we pray for our nation, and as we are always encouraged to pray for our leadership, we pray for our president, we pray for our courts, we pray for those men and women who have been elected to create and enforce laws. We ask that they be fair and just to all people living within our land. We pray for those men and women who serve overseas within our military, within the Peace Corps, within your mission field. We must always be mindful, especially around the holidays, as people are so far from their loved ones and their families and those and that which is familiar. It can be a lonely time for many people. Allow your presence to be felt. Allow your warmth to be with all throughout this season. Lord, we pray for those members within our congregation, those who struggle with depression or anxiety, those who are crushed in spirit. And we are uplifted and always comforted that our prayers do not fall upon deaf ears. Be with those who cry out for you. And as we prepare to lift our prayers, we are encouraged because we know that they do not fall upon deaf ears. So we say together, Lord, please hear our prayers as we lift them to you. We pray for all of the Hadads who are traveling this holiday season, traveling some overseas, um, far from home. Allow people, allow them to arrive safely, to enjoy the holiday, and then of course to travel back home to be with us safely as well. <coughs> we are so joyed for Benjamin's success of his shoulder surgery. Um, we continually pray that he heals and that he's able to rehabilitate uh, his shoulder. Uh, we are thankful it all went well. Give him the strength to be able to continue to heal. We lift up uh, Alan and uh, we thank you, God, for the success of his surgery. We are thankful for Suhail and his hands and his gifts for the surgery and for the help of the congregation um, that have helped care for Alan throughout his healing process. We lift up Bill Crace, uh, whose heart is doing extremely well. Uh, and we offer you thanks and we, we thank you for that and the ability to be able to get his heart back on the right track. Thank you for that, Lord. Um, we thank you for Jim um, and him coming to this congregation. We thank you for Vera and Garrett for introducing Jim to this congregation of faith. And 
we just are, are so excited and we just hope that we are a blessing to Jim as Jim has already been a blessing to this congregation of faith. We lift up prayers for Mary Lou Rhodes who is continually struggling with her eyesight and, and sometimes a worsening condition. Give her the rest she needs but give her also the strength um, to allow her body to work with the treatments that she receives from her doctors. We also pray for Aline's mother, May, overseas. We, as always, pray for her comfort, and um, we are thankful that she is surrounded by loved ones that are there to care for her. We just ask that she remain pleasant and to enjoy the days and enjoy her company. Um, we just ask you to be with her as the good physician to comfort her and to be with her and to just pour your love onto her and allow her to be happy. Be with her on this day and throughout these holidays. Lord, we thank you for so many things. There are so many things that we are thankful for and so many that we don't even realize that we should be thankful for. And they stem from your son, Jesus Christ. So as we prepare to close this prayer, let us use the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have now come to the point within our worship service where we are able to give back the <coughs> portion of which you have given to us. Freely as you have been given, freely give. kingdom now and your kingdom yet to be revealed in Christ's holy and precious name we pray amen. Amen. amen please remain standing as we prepare to sing our closing hymn for our worship service uh, hymn number 20 watchman tell us of the night
sanctuary and re-enter our community, let us go and be bold. Be bold in all you do. Be bold in spreading the gospel. Be bold in loving people. Be bold in welcoming your neighbors. Be bold in all of your service you do in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Allow a spark of John to live within us all that inspires us never to be silenced and to live the gospel with power and compassion. May the love of the Father, the peace of the Son, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you on this day and every day. Amen. Amen.